What do you mean you can have cancer in the eye? It's true, you certainly can. In this episode of OcuTalk, we'll be talking with Dr. Jesse Berry about different types of ocular cancers, signs to look out for, and various treatment options available. Dr. Berry? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest from Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, California. We have Dr. Jesse Berry. Dr. Berry, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Pleased to be here. Excellent. Again, thank you for taking your time out of your day with us. Uh, first of all, Dr. Berry, just wanted to get it started here. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, and your specialty. Absolutely. Well, I am originally from Wisconsin, uh, so not a native Californian, and then uh, did my undergraduate and medical training out on the East Coast at Harvard and came out to Los Angeles to do my ophthalmology surgical training at uh, University of Southern California and stayed on. I did my uh, subspecialty fellowship in ocular oncology, which means that I treat uh, cancers and other tumors on the front and inside of the eye. And I work now with adults at USD and as you said, children at Children's Hospital. Well, perfect. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And that, that's fantastic. And uh, you talked a little bit about ocular oncology. I was hoping that maybe you can explain that a little bit further for some of our viewers who may not know what that is. Yeah, absolutely. I think the first question my patients always ask me once I've given them a diagnosis is, you know, what do you mean you, you can have cancer in the eye? They didn't even know that that existed. And not only can you have cancer um, on the front of the eye or on the inside of the eye, or even in back of the eye in the area called the orbit, there are multiple different kinds of cancers. Um, and I treat many different kinds of cancers. I would say the main ones are a type of cancer that occurs in very, very young on the inside of the eye. That's something called retinoblastoma. And in adults, I treat a lot of melanoma. Melanoma, of course, is much more common on the skin. Um, and it is a cancer, but it's a cancer that can affect pigmented cells all over the body. So you can have them affect pretty much any structure in the eye where there are pigmented cells that can be in the front of the eye, the iris, or in the area inside of the eye called the ciliary body or the choroid. Uh, and I also treat some sun related cancers on the front of the eye, like ocular surface squamous neoplasia. That's another common one that comes to my clinic. Gotcha. Wow. There's just so many that I didn't even think about either. So that's amazing to hear. Uh, I, when you uh, were explaining it just now, you talked a little bit about retinoblastoma. I, I was hoping that maybe you could explain that a little further for some of our viewers who don't know what that is either. Sure. Absolutely. So uh, it's actually the most common primary cancer that uh, occurs in the eyes of very children. This is a cancer that can affect one or both eyes in infants or toddlers, really very, very young children, often between the age of 12 and 24 months have this cancer. And it has a genetic cause, um, but that doesn't always mean that the genetics came from one of the parents. Oftentimes, it's just a new spontaneous genetic mutation uh, that happens in the baby, and it's nobody's fault. The parents, the thing that I, one of the things I find so interesting about this cancer is that it's our parents who often pick it up. So uh, it's something I want all parents to always look for in their children. What they often notice is that instead of having a red reflex at the time of a flash photography, the eye can look white or yellow in the pupil or under low light conditions, like maybe when they're giving their child a bath and the pupil dilates a little bit, they might notice a glow or some sort of change in the eye. So if in a picture you just see a little white reflection one time in your child, it's actually normal. I have a two-year-old. I've seen it in her multiple times. And, and when that happens, it's just the light bouncing off the optic nerve. But if it's something that's happening all the time and you're always seeing this uh, white change or white reflex in the eye, you absolutely need to go to your pediatrician and be referred to an eye specialist. There are other causes of this aside from retinoblastoma, but that's definitely the most concerning. 
Uh, that that is very interesting because uh, I, I have a four month old as well, so I'm gonna definitely be looking out for a photo. I'm definitely looking at his eyes a lot more now. Uh, but that that's very fascinating, by the way. Thank you so much. And um, how are um, ocular tumors? Uh, I'm curious how ocular tumors are diagnosed. Like, what should we be looking out for? Uh, I know you talked a little bit about like looking at pictures and like. Uh, so, is there anything else that we need to be looking out for uh, for like signs for that for ocular tumors? Yeah, that's a great question. And obviously each tumor has a little bit of a profile, you know, um, for my adult patients, particularly my adult melanoma patients, most of those patients are completely asymptomatic when they're diagnosed with their eye cancer and it's picked up during a routine dilated exam. So even if your eyes are totally normal, we do recommend that once a year or once every other year, you have a routine exam. And if anyone's ever told you that you have a freckle or a mole in your eye, that's another indication to really make sure that you're having those exams, just like on the skin, freckles or moles can turn into melanomas. And so, you know, you can look at your skin. And so if you see a change, you'd go to your dermatologist, but in your eye, you usually can't see the mole on its own. And so you actually need an eye specialist to be evaluating this directly. And that's what I spend a fair amount of my time doing. Oh, absolutely. Well, again, the, the fascinating information. I, I, I'm learning a lot right now. Uh, but uh, Dr. Barry, I, I know uh, you've said there are many different forms of ocular cancer. So uh, could you tell us about maybe just one and how you would go about treating it? Sure, absolutely. So you're right. You know, the treatment really depends on what kind of tumor it is, where it is. Um, are you a kid? Are you an adult? So a, a wide range there. But um, I would say it was that um, I'm an eye surgeon. So whenever I possibly can, and whenever I can do it safely, I want to treat you so that we can save your eye. Um, removing the eye in the setting of eye cancer, no matter the type, is obviously something that's always a possible treatment. But if it's safe and possible, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to save your eye. And whenever possible, I'd like to do that and maximize the best amount of vision possible. Our whole goal, just like with any cancer, is to kill the cancer and get you back to living your life as soon as possible. One of the things I do most frequently, in fact, I did it this morning, is a type of radiation therapy for tumors in the eye called plaque brachytherapy. And so what that is, is a, a piece of gold. It's maybe about the size of a, a nickel or a quarter, depending on how big your tumor is. And it's loaded with radiation seeds. And I go in and I actually surgically place that plaque on the eye in the area of the tumor. And then you as the patient go home, the eye is being radiated. It's not radiating your other eye. It's not radiating your brain. It's not radiating your body. It's just radiating the tumor tissue in the eye, and then a small area outside that tumor tissue. And then you come back and we take the plaque off. And that's a really highly effective way to treat multiple kinds of um, ocular tumors. One of the main ones that are treated that way is the melanomas that I mentioned, particularly the melanomas that are in the back of the eye. That's a fascinating technology. I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even thought that that was an actual technology that you have. But um, speaking of, do, do you know of any like other new technologies or new treatment options that, that are happening right now? Yeah, you know, the plaques that I mentioned were actually, they're not new, but the ones that we use were designed at USC. And you know, everybody that treats cancer, not just for eyes, but in every specialty, like I said, is trying to minimize the therapy and really personalize so that it's for you as a patient and for your cancer. So one of the things I really like about these plaques is that um, each one is designed specifically to fit the eye of the patient and the size of the tumor. So it's not this one size fits all big old plaque that we put on the eye. It's a, it's a very personalized specific plaque for you as the patient. I, I really like that aspect of it. For retinoblastoma, and even for some other cancers in adults, we're also doing injection therapy where we're injecting chemotherapy into or around the eye. Again, lots of different cancers and lots of different types of injections, but we are, we are doing a, a more and more uh, thorough job of getting that treatment localized to the eye where the cancer is. You know, a lot of my patients, well, isn't there just a drop for this? 
And for most cancers, not all, but for most cancers, the answer is no, there's not just a drop for this, um, but we're, we're at least getting to the point where most of the treatment is, is locally based. Well, fantastic. And uh, Dr. Barry, I know we, you talked about it earlier about like we were talking about our children and looking at certain, certain aspects of what's going on. Uh, what, what do I need to look out for? Are there other risks that I need to like, we need to avoid or we need to other things that we need to look at in order to properly diagnose and go to our eye physicians and be like, Hey, this is what's going on. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So for retinoblastoma, the answer is, you know, as parents, just be aware, you'd be surprised how many, even parents in the medical profession might not know about retinoblastoma because it really is so rare. And so, you know, it can be easy to say, Oh, wait, did I see something? Oh, wait, I didn't. But again, if you, if it's something you keep seeing, make, make, it checked out, even if it's not retinoblastoma, it should absolutely be checked out so that you can maximize your child's development. For better or worse, we all walk around with this phone, right? Although we don't always take flash photos, and sometimes it's most obvious on flash, flash photography. Um, if you're anything like me, you have 9,000 pictures of your four month old already. So, yeah. many, many to look through. Um, for other cancers, uh, you know, sun protection can play a role, particularly for some of the ocular surface cancers like the squamous cells or even the conjunctival melanomas. And so we live in Southern California. It's beautiful. I know I'm excited to, to get out and enjoy a sunny day whenever they, um, whenever they come, they're here a lot from old <laughs> South and girl, but, uh, make sure that you're wearing sunglasses and that you have UV protection in the same way it's pounded into our head that we should put sunscreen on. And, you know, women particularly have SPF almost in all of their makeup. We really need to protect our eyes as well by wearing those sunglasses. And I put sunglasses on my daughter as much as she'll tolerate. It's not perfect, but when we go for a walk, you know, mommy puts on her sunglasses, yeah. baby puts on her sunglasses and we make it fun so that she can have that protection as well. And then get routine exams. I mean, I'll tell you, we ophthalmologists are the worst. I'm not sure I totally remember when I've had my last exam. It means I have to have to book that. But really, you can be completely asymptomatic or really minimally symptomatic from something that's growing on a part of your eye that just isn't affecting vision and you yourself don't see. So making sure that in the same way you show up for the rest of your body, for your routine health maintenance, you show up for your eyes. Well, you heard it there, folks. Dr. Barry, tell, tell them to go get their eyes checked, wear your sunglasses, protect yourself. I, I love it. I, I need to, I'm going to take your advice. I need to go do that myself. Um, I, was there I tell people you don't want to see me, right? No one <laughs> wants to be referred to the eye cancer doctor. Um, so as much as I, I will take very good care of you, if you ever have to be my patient, you want to avoid me. So avoid me as much as you can. Uh, well, Dr. Barry, uh, is there anything uh, before we go? Is there anything else that you'd like to tell our audience? Yeah, you know, I'd just like to um, say that aside from just the treatment that our patients have to go through when they're diagnosed with eye cancer, which one, it's scary if it's your baby and it's a, a baby that's diagnosed, it's really scary for the patients, but the treatment itself can have some long lasting effects on the eye and particularly in a place where it's dry, um, you know, dry eye and other ocular health issues long term come up. So it really becomes something where we have to follow these patients and help them maximize their eye health well beyond their treatment. It's something that I really love about my job and love doing, but is absolutely very important. Well, again, fantastic. Great information, Dr. Barry. Thank you so much. And for everyone, that was Dr. Jesse Barry from Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, California. Uh, Dr. Barry, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. You guys, remember, get those appointments and wear your sunglasses. <laughs>